Okay, hey everyone, I'm going to uh, do a demonstration on actually making a brush using this uh, brush uh, table that I made. Um, it's a little bit elaborate and I am still working on the instructional uh, document to uh, have all the call outs and photographs and everything so that if you uh, like what you see here, you can just build your own. I, I really, at this time, uh, don't plan on selling these things. Uh, I, I might have one once I open my store downstairs. Um, I'm up in my office right now and we're working on uh, getting the uh, new fly shop spin casting bait shop. No live bait, but all, all, all artificial stuff uh, downstairs. So let's go ahead and get to uh, building this thing. There's a number of things that um, that I can call out here. This is kind of a, a, uh, a layout pad that I made. It's, it is 12 inches from this point to this point and I have a, a, a tape, a sticky tape on my table um, that'll show me where, you know, if I decide later to build um, brushes to the length that the number of wraps that I use on a specific hook, say I have an, a, a streamer hook that's an inch and a half uh, of shank, then whatever the, um, the distance that I need for an inch and a half shank, I'll be able to just go to that point and, and stop. Uh, but for this, for this uh, demonstration of the, uh, of the actual table, I'm gonna do the whole, um, the whole 12 inches here. Um, so what, what we're going to do is I, I uh, lay my, I, I call this the base and this is uh, an EP type uh, fiber uh, that I use. Let's go ahead and go to this camera here. This is an EP fiber and um, I cut it about just about three inches long. Uh, I don't want it too thick but I don't want it too thin neither. Um, so when I lay it out what I want is for the, the strands to be as straight as possible um, from, from front to back. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece of, uh, of uh, the fibers to the, to the length that I need, which is about, about three inches. Throw that away. And I like to kind of get it pre-sorted or pre-fanned out in the palm of my hand so that I can kind of like in an accordion fashion lay it down so that I've got this kind of consistency all the way across my layout board here. So we'll go ahead and and uh, do that. And this one here has already been somewhat brushed and I'll show you what I mean by brushing it out before you brush it on the uh, on, on the uh, on the thread that I use. I don't I'm not using a wire, but I want to accordion all this material out, and I'm just grabbing it a little bit at a time to lay it down. Just like that. And now, one of the things I found on um, on doing this this way is that the um, the fibers do better. They do better if they're as perfectly aligned uh, front to back as you can possibly get them. If the fibers are crossed uh, in all different directions, then when you uh, go to twist, since it's already crossed, it's going to cross even more, and it will. Um, it, it makes it harder. Not to say that you can't do it, but it makes it harder to to brush out your fibers. Um, so I'm going to show you how I do that. I have a, a, uh, a squeegee here and I'll take my I'll take my wire brush and then simply lay this down in such in, with enough pressure that when I go to stroke the fibers um, they will stay in place. Actually, I don't do it on the top here. This, this, the top part of this table flexes a little bit, but you can see what's going on here. You can see how it goes down. This is the, this is the side that locks it 
in place. Um, to be quite honest with you, let's go ahead and do it where I always do it instead of trying to have it where you can see. I, and in fact, I think you can even see it right there. So I'll go ahead and get these lined up a little bit again. And each time I have a little bit of a, an open space, I'll bring these in and line them up. I mean, you don't have to have um, this table to do this, but I just kind of think that this helps out on, and I can put a lot of pressure on this wood where it doesn't pull, pull any fibers out. And you can see how it straightens up there. Getting all of the white, like see it's darker here, and it's not so much over there. So I'll go ahead and turn this around. And now I'll grab this end here and I'll comb out the, the fibers so that they are just perfectly straight front to back. I mean, some might say that this is an unnecessary step, but um, to be quite honest with you, I think that it, it helps keep the fibers uh, more aligned when you're actually doing your, your wrap, your twist, um, either with the motor or by hand, uh, with the fibers. So. Let's go ahead and bring this up into place. I gotta take the extra fibers. Oh, oops, wait a minute. I'm trying to get ahead of myself. That, that, that's gonna stay down there. And what I use, this is a, um, a, a polyester thread, and it's by uh, Coates and Clark. It's 100% uh, polyester, and it is a very, very strong thread. I mean, I, I would like to see somebody take this thread, I don't want to see somebody on a video say, saying, look, I can break it. I don't know if you actually have this thread or not. If you can break it, I guarantee you it's not this thread. Uh, you'll have the thread cut into your fingers before you actually um, break it. So what we want to do is put a little loop knot in here. Just like so. Tighten it up and clip off the tag. I'm just going to clip the tag off there. Okay, throw that away. Now, on my uh, table, I have hooks that are, well, the, the uh, rod that I'm using, it's a um, linear bearing rod that I drilled out on the end to put a, a, um, a uh, 330 seconds, I believe it is, a piece of wire that I bent over, uh, drilled it out, put it in, I drilled it out probably about an inch, inch and a quarter deep, and then before I actually put it, assembled this unit right here, let's go right back to this again, before I actually assembled all this part right here, um, I soldered that into place and then put a, uh, a stop collar on. These are linear bearing followers here or guides and when I drilled through I was able to put a guide on both sides so that my, uh, my follower um, side of the brush just, just perfectly follows the thread in. It's got a really nice pressure to it with this, with this um, compression spring right here. Um, I'm actually thinking about getting a bigger, a little bit longer, slightly longer compression string, spring, and that means I'll have to do a different rod and, and rework this, this piece here. But, but what we're going to do is take that piece that we just uh, put a loop on and put it right on that part right there. Then we're going to bring it across and put it on this side. And what we're going to want to do is I've got an extension uh, block that holds the um, it holds the uh, this follower end out just far enough so that I can get my thread tied into this uh, loop right here. And when you get it uh, when you get it in there, what happens is when I pull this out, it pulls this thread really nice and tight. So all we do is just wrap. 
pull it in, bring it around, do it a couple, two or three times, and each time you do it, you kind of run under and over the opposite side. I don't know if you I just know what I'm saying, but when, if you do this, you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. Let me go to the overhead camera here. So now what I'm going to do is pull the thread out and run the bob, uh, bobbin in just like that, maybe one, two, three, three passes, and then hold it tight here, bring the thread over. Now I've got a nice knot right there that holds that into place. So now what we're going to want to do is come back over to the other side again and put the thread right inside there because I want my top, my top thread or my bottom thread is looped and tied into the other side. It's looped here and tied into the other side. And then when I bring the thread uh, over top, I, to get the exact distance of the top thread, I just put my thread down, don't put a whole lot of pressure on it, just a little bit of pressure, take a marker and mark, mark the threads. And then what that does is, and now you can pull this out, your, uh, block, your spacer block, or tensioning block, or I'm not sure what I want to call it yet, but you'll get the idea. Anyway, um, there we have, now we have the, uh, the, that red mark. Let's see if I can pull this around. To, there we go. Now we have that red mark that we put while it was looped through here. That means the end of my new loop has to have that red uh, right at the top of that loop. And all we need to do now is again tie in that uh, tie in that loop knot, making sure that that red point on the on the top thread has that red right near, at least near the top. Then we're going to want to cut to where we have a nice tag in left on the uh, on the top thread and then we can kind of pull that tight so it would not come out come out on you and now what we're going to want to do okay so now what we're going to want to do is um, I made these these are uh, little sponge brush brushes all it is is uh, sponge in insulation that I put on a popsicle stick and the reason for that is when I uh, juice this bottom thread up I'm going to I'm going to juice it up with let's go over here I'm going to juice it up with this uh, CA glue it's a flexible CA glue and I'm going to butter this up to the point where the thread is is uh, saturated. I want to saturate this thread. Now, super glue takes a very long time to dry if it ha if it doesn't have pressure applied to it. I mean, you can put a, a a dab of glue on a piece of glass or something that is not going to absorb the glue. A piece of you know uh, pl very solid plastic or something. You put that dab on there, and it's going to be there for a little while before it starts to uh, to set up. It's kind of the same thing with the uh, thread here. The thread doesn't have any compression pressure on it. It's just like a wick, and it's holding the CA glue uh, on the bottom thread. So what we want to do is load up the sponge with this flexible CA glue. And I'm going to just simply run it across that bottom thread. Just like that. Bring it across the top, across the bottom, and just do it kind of slow, kind of a back and forth to ooze it out of the sponge and onto the, uh, onto the bottom part of your, your thread there. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is bring your table up 
and there's a groove there's a groove cut out in this table to where when I bring it up to the height of where these two uh, hooks are in perfect alignment of each other that thread drops right down uh, just under the groove so that when I put materials down it's below the the surface here enough to where my materials will not touch that super glue so that when I need to make a, um, adjustments I, I can do that okay so we're going to bring our piece up that we uh, that we uh, brushed out to have the fibers going in the same direction all the time and I'm just bring it up and lay it down on top of the table just like that okay so now what I can do is kind of fine-tune it and adjust it to where that thread runs right down the middle as, as middle through the middle as I possibly can get it here Let's see what it looks like yeah so that that's that that's that right there now now what I'm going to want to do is put um, this is my material rack here and I want to take um, some kind of flash this is a metallic silver flash here and grab me a little more than a half dozen maybe eight strands of this stuff here I don't really put a whole lot of um, uh, different colors in mine although I have colors here I use it for different things but um, I just want some flash to get that that flash uh, effect when it's when it's under the water if I want to color my, um, my my fly my streamer I, I will actually use a um, an alcohol based airbrush and I'll put my collar in at, at that point. So right now what I want to do is get these evened up here like so. These are actually, I've already got everything pre-measured, so these are about half, or about three inches. So these things here will, will fit just right across the materials I have laid out on the table here. And then I like this stuff because it's somewhat rigid and it's straight and that means that when I go to lay it down it'll lay down nice and straight so that when I go to do my spinning um, it, it stays in place and doesn't cross over itself so that's another reason why I've got this um, this tape down here you don't really have to do it you can you can eyeball it I just like to have kind of OCD like that um, I just like to have the uh, I like to have it uh, as precise as possible for the for the stuff to be laid out here. So let's go ahead and put one on one in, on every inch mark, and I'm not going to go all the way down because I'm pretty sure once I get to about seven or eight, I'm ready to start cutting that off on my uh, on my flies. See, so I dropped all that. So let's get we'll go to nine. So now I'll come back again and I'll put them on the half mark. I might even put a couple of pieces in at a time. I want the back side here to be a little bit more flash than the front side because the back side is, the, is going to have the most uh, movement to it in the water, I believe. Anyway, there we go. Okay, so we've got that. Now what I'm going to want to do is... Now we need to butter up the top piece, the top line here. There's another. Let's go ahead and not waste any of these. I'll put that down there. Put another one on it. Yet another one. Now I could put some collared materials in here, but I, I, almost everything that I tie uh, is white. I chase, I don't go after, you know, trout or any of these fish that you might think need color that people, want, that, the, that, the, uh, that the fish want to see. Um, the water that I fish is loaded with uh, shiners and shad. Uh, for some reason, it's real weird being a smallmouth um, creek. 
there's hardly, I, I have, in the 15 years that I've been fishing this creek, I have not seen um, soft crawls or crawdads in it. So it's mostly the, it's this, the staple food for the smallmouth in the waters I fish is a minnow type, type food. So let's go ahead and grab our little brush here again and load it up a second time with some of that CA glue. Just like that. And grab the line. Now the tag end kind of helps me keep the super glue off of my fingers. So I can bring it all the way up to the tip here. And again, we're wanting to saturate this line to where it's really loaded and wicked out with, with the super glue in it. We want to get as much super glue into that with saturated with super glue without it dripping or anything like that. And that's the reason for the that's the reason for the uh, sponge little toothbrush type thing that I made here to get the uh, the super glue on that top piece. So now we're, now we have it up on top. Make sure you make sure you keep this taut, and use that tag end, and then bring it down. You want to compress the spring a little bit again, and then bring it over top, and hook both pieces. So I missed that one. Bring it in. There we go. So we'll have that. Now I can cut my tag end off because if I don't, then this is going to wrap up on your uh, on your brush. So now that we've got it to this point here, all I need to do is drop my table, and you can see how it just the 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 uh, pressure of this spring over here is going to pull tight enough that it compresses the material and it's not going to go anywhere. I need to make sure that I have my uh, motor set to do a counterclockwise spin and then I'll do a clockwise spin on this piece here. Now that's something else I'm going to be adding to this um, to this uh, to, to my brush maker here. I'm going to get something and, it, and it's probably going to require me to make a, a longer shaft because I want to put a piece on here where I can grab it and I can spin it like so but spin it with a bigger wheel to get more turns out of it more quickly. So as I do that, let's go to this camera here. So as I do that, as I'm spinning this way, I'm spinning it clockwise. Let's go here. I'm spinning it clockwise on this end and counterclockwise on this end, and I've got a reverse reversible switch and then my uh, variable speed. So I'm going to put a little bit more pressure on it and then turn it on. Okay. And then I'll watch my... Um, my compression spring here because you, you don't want that compression spring to bottom completely out. If you do, that's when you might might be able to uh, break your spring or break your string. Uh, but I think you'll see here in a minute when I start to brush all this out how strong this thread, this polyester type thread is. I mean you can see it is really wound in there tight. And so what I want to do now is just start grabbing back and forth to pull the pull the fibers out. And in a minute you'll see as we do this, I really kind of you know challenge somebody to be as aggressive on their wire as I'm being as I am being on this thread. I mean I'm really, really giving it a go. I mean really pulling the the um, the fibers and the thread and it's going down on there and it's just biting into that material really nicely. And see, so what I'm wanting to do is get it to where it, it's almost all the way down to the thread and the thread has got a hold of the materials so that the materials has the super glue and the tightness and it will not slip out. That's the whole idea of this, uh, of this technique that I use, use here. Now, you don't have to have this table, this particular table to do this, as long as you have a, a groove in there to put your, your wet, super glued thread on. Um, I think it does help to, you know, have a, 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 a uh, compression type spring rather than a, um, 
and the other spring. I, I'm not at, at a loss as to what they're called. Uh, this is a compression spring, and then you got your pull springs or whatever they're called. But um, anyway, you can see I'm really giving it a lot of authority here to pull. I mean, I'm almost trying to to break or tear that thread. And this is a wire brush. Of course, it's a, a brass wire, but still a wire brush. Okay, so we've got this part here done. So what we got to do is just get all this wire to pull out of that, out of those turned pieces, and just keep it right on going all the way down to the end. And that's what we're doing here, all the way down to the end. There we go. That's pretty much. That's pretty much it right there. I just love the way this thing brushes out. Now I'm going to do something that's probably going to seem kind of silly to to you here. Got this all brushed out, and now what I'm going to do is reverse my motor because all of these things have a recoil in them. I'm going to get as much of these things as I can to where the thread is showing through all of the material. There we go. So that's that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to thread. See how that real nice and clean that thread is right there? That's uh, very clean. Now if it would stay like this um, in the one direction that would be totally awesome. Uh, but the problem is when you go to cut the ends off you've still got all of this tension right here so what I want to do is take the tension off of the thread I mean that's where the recoil comes in the recoil comes in when you have a taut wire or thread the problem with the wire is I, I don't think you can reverse the wire without it actually because it's got a memory to it um, and and actually the 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 uh, wire or the material captured inside the wire it, it'll loosen up but whereas with this being super glued together I I, I am sort of twisting back but I don't want to twist it twist it back so far that I re bottom out my compression side here my follower or compression side so what I want to do is reverse the motor, and it's going to it, and take and keep an eye on this. But you'll also see on the table here, or on, on the uh, or on the, on the thread, you'll see where it starts to uh, wind again. Now I can go a little bit slower with this, like so. Keep an eye on this over here. Oops, let me get it on this one here. You can see it going back. Now once it gets to a point where it stops. There, it's just about ready to stop. There, it stopped. So now I've got this brush that's back to being like this. However, it's not as bad. It's not, if you look inside there, you can see that it, it's just wound around a little bit more loosely. So now I'll go through and I'll grab my material and I'll brush it again. And what this does is, Separate them out here, the top and bottom of the seal here. Okay, that's pretty nicely separated. So now what I need to do is, and I, I dare somebody to take their wire and really rack on it like I am here on this thread. This thread is not going to break. I've actually tried to break it, and it is not going to break. Yeah. Well, there we go. Um, we've got ourselves a, a, um, a brush that won't recoil because we've taken that pressure off of the thread. You can see it right here. That's, that's all taken out of there. So now on this, I can turn my hook up so I can easily go inside there, grab it, and unhook it. And then the same thing over on this side is just pull it off the off that hook and unhook it and there you've got yourself a, 
a very nice brush ready to palmer and it's so much easier to palmer something like this than it is when you have materials going in all different directions. You, you still have to kind of guide it back as you're tying. You still have to pull it back as you're palmering it around, um, but not you, you won't have as much. Uh, you, you'll have more control with this type of brush than you will on the ones that you don't uh, uncompress. Because again, when you uncompress them, that's when it just, as you can see, when I uncompress this, by by manually uncompressing it without cutting it by reversing the thread um, what happened is when I rebrushed out it was easier to rebrush out the second twist than it was the first twist and once you have that you know all brushed out you end up with with that right there I mean it's really kind of hard to beat that now you can see my flash is kind of going all over the place but um, that's because it's a very uh, a very straight uh, a flash and actually the flash that I'm using is not from a fly shop I got it off of Amazon and it's hair extension stuff and it's got the same uh, diameters and everything uh, and it's very strong I mean this stuff here does not does not break easy I've been using it for a long time on the smallmouth that I go fishing for and it doesn't break it does, but you really have to pull hard in a long, a long way. And if you really think about it, when I went as aggressively as I did with a wire brush at this to straighten out these fibers so that you would have a nice straight brush, uh, the, any toothy fish that you go after is not going to have, you know, much more. It, it, it'll have a little bit, but not much more... Uh, devastating effect to your uh, to your to your brushes to your flies that you have that you that you use brushes on anyway this is that's how that that's how I do that um, I'll tie another video I'll do I hope we'll get it done here within the next week is uh, I'll do a video on using this brush uh, that I make on this machine here um, and the first one I'll do I've actually got a couple I'm not sure where they are um, should have put him out here before I started the video, um, but um, I'll do what I call a streeper, and a streeper is not streeper is not the name of the fly. A lot of people have had a problem with me calling what I put together a streeper, but a streeper is actually the type of fly. You've got poppers and you got streamers, and you you know streamers and poppers, and I just ran the two words together streep streamers, drop the M, E, R, and then put the poppers on the end, took the P, O off and P, P, E, R. Now you got streepers. That's how I came up with that uh, definition of this of that type of a fly. And I'll tie one up here as soon as I can, and uh, I'll get that up right after this here using this material here anyway. Uh, this is Mike. If you got any questions, just post them below this video on my uh, YouTube channel, or if, I, if you're seeing this on... Um, on a Facebook in a Facebook group, uh, obviously you can you can post your questions there. It would be nice if you post them posted them on um, the the uh, YouTube channel though, so that other people that might have the same question as you do can read the comments and see my, the answer that I give you instead of me having to give the answer uh, to a number of different people for the same question. Another thing is, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I, I have people that uh, really don't like me using materials outside of a fly shop, although I am going to be a fly shop next year, which is part of the reason why I'm doing this, is to let everybody know that I'm not into it for the money, although I know a lot of shops need the money, but I'm more into it, into educating and help people go out and catch fish on a fly rod. That's what it's all about for me. So thumbs up. I've had guys that, I've had people that for some reason, I'll put a six minute video up and within two minutes of me putting the video up, it'll have a thumbs down on it. I mean, they didn't even watch the video. So what that's all about, I, I really don't know. Thumbs up are really nice. Subscriptions are really nice. If you saw, if you saw this, you like it, I've got more stuff coming. Um, I've got a, a, a special table that I use to uh, cut out shapes on in foam to use for... Uh, foam uh, flies and poppers 
And uh, But anyway, yeah, I hope you got something out of this. And until the next video, this is Mike. We'll catch you later.